For a hook, you want a short shank streamer hook like these 068s from Risen. And I'm using a size 1 aught today. And for thread, you want a strong thread like this Vivas 140 power thread. And I'm using chartreuse. Start your thread near the eye of the hook and then bring it back to the bend before snipping off the tag end. You'll want two white rooster saddle hackles. And I have this beautiful saddle here. But you could also use an American saddle pack like this one here. Just make sure it's in white. Find two saddles with similar looking tips like this. Measure them out to about three times the length of the hook off the back. And then strip off the fibers at that measurement and remove the tips from the rest of the feather. Now we're going to tie in the feathers one at a time. Now this can be tricky because we want the feathers to lay sideways. When tied in on the side of the hook, they want to lay flat like so. But if you tie it in on top of the hook, it will easily lay perfectly straight up and down like this. Might take you a few tries. But tie it in and fold the stem back and tie that in to ensure the tails don't pull out. And then trim off any waste. Now do the same thing with the other feather. But with this feather, make sure and align the tips. You can see here how the feathers get tied in. Slightly split is fine as long as they are even while looking straight on the side. I like to have a couple wraps under the feathers to ensure they stay upright a little. Now for some synthetic fibers. I'm going to use a mixture of Congo hair and water silk. Now Congo hair is basically the same thing as standard EP fiber, and water silk is the finer version of Congo hair, which can be substituted for EP silky fiber. But the finer material really helps with the top part of this fly. You'll see later. We will be selecting a very small amount of the chartreuse color first. In fact, all the colors will be using a very small amount of fiber. Measure out this section to about a hook length shy of the end of the feathers. Then while holding that measurement, double the fiber back on itself. Now I like to trim a little short because I will taper this which will lengthen both sides. To taper the ends, just pull out little bits like so until it doesn't look cut square. Now tie the fiber in on the side of the hook to cover up the feather, extending back to about that measurement that we made before. Pull the fiber around to the other side and tie it in in the same way there. Now select a similar size piece of black water silk. Taper the end and tie it in on top of the fly extending back to the same amount as the chartreuse. Now you will not be doubling this section up. Just tie it in and trim it off at the end like this. Now prepare some silver or white Congo hair in the same way you did the chartreuse water silk. Tie it in so it's under the rest of the fiber like so. And then turn it around and tie it in on the other side as well. You can see the original fiber is a little bushier than the silky stuff which makes for a larger belly without bulking it up so much. Now we're going to bring our thread up slightly and do the same thing with the black and silver fibers once more. Then advance your thread forward a little again. Now we will prepare some more silver Congo hair. Now I'm not doing this very scientifically, but it seems to work for me. Fold the fiber in half and then trim a section off from the center like so. Then trim the longer section in half. And this is a quick way of turning it into three sort of equal sized sections. Now put a little ice dub on each section for some flash. Take one of the sections and split the end like so. Yes, this is messy and not precise, but don't worry about it. It will come out looking great at the end. Put the split section through the bend of the hook like so and tie it in roughly in the center of the clump with two to three wraps. Then turn the fly back around and tie in the black section on top. Then tie forward quite a bit. It will seem too far for you, but you will see in a second that it's not. Adjust the fibers to make sure that they are laying directly on top and bottom of the hook once again. Then pull the black fiber rearward and make two wraps to hold it in place. Then pull the silver fiber rearward and around the bend of the hook and make a couple wraps to hold it rearward as well. Repeat this step once more, making sure to advance your thread to about an eye length shy of the eye of the hook. Now for some crystal flash. I am using chartreuse here. Clip off two strands and align the tips. Then tie it in so it extends back about halfway to the rear of the fly. Then pull it around and tie it in on the other side extending rearward as well. And then trim to length. When tying these in, make sure they are even on the side and straight. Now take the remaining chartreuse clump 
Now I find it helps to trim this section instead of pulling it around. Also make sure the tips are tapered and it bleeds nicely into the tail section. Now for one last section of the silver belly and black back, but this time you don't need to space it out as much. Just tie it up to the eye of the hook like so. Whip finish your fly and snip off the thread. Now the tying portion of this fly is done. We're going to want to add eyes, but before you do so, you want to fan out the materials to be close to what the finished product will look like. Then return it to your vise. To adhere the eyes to the fly, you can use numerous types of glues. I find gel super glue works great though. Get your eyes ready before applying the glue also. I like sticking two on my hand. Then add a small dot of super glue up right behind the whip finish and then stick the eye on. But make sure it's not perfectly centered, but higher on top versus the bottom. This will give you more of a hook gap, which will help in setting the hook. Also, you'll want to make sure a little bit of the whip finish is sticking out of the front of the eyes. Also, arrange the materials how you want them before letting the glue set. Now do the same thing with the other eye on the other side. And make sure you align these eyes perfectly. You want them aligned while you're looking straight on at them, also on the front and also above. Keep playing with the eyes until they're perfectly aligned and then let them dry before epoxying them. And gel super glue does take a little longer than regular super glue to set, so it gives you some time to play with it. Now we're going to need to put some resin on the fly. I use both this flex formula and the thin hard formula from Solares. Solares resin uses a UV light, like the super high powered one that I actually did a review on a while back. And it really helps to have the precision tip on the Solares thin hard formula for this. But you can use the standard nozzle with the flex formula. Angle a fly up like so and put a drop of the thin hard formula between the eyes and then cure it in to let it set. This will keep the eyes from flexing and breaking off and it kind of welds them together. Next we're going to want to trim the fly to a rough bait fish shape. I use two scissors for this, a long hair cutting scissor and a short fly tying hair scissor. Make an angled cut with the long scissors, leaving a small amount of the black fiber like so. Then use the hook as a guide and make an angle cut just below the bend of the hook to the rear of the belly fiber. Then use the short hair scissors to round out the front of the fiber like so. Also the fiber will splay out of the base and I like to make angle cuts rounding out the belly like this. And there we go, a rough bait fish. We will make final cuts later. This doesn't have to be perfect. Now we will need to use our fingers to brush the flex formula through the fly. So you'll want to grab a pair of gloves to do so. Squeeze a little bit of the flex formula around the eyes on all sides. Then use your fingers to massage the resin through the fibers of the fly. Back a little past the hook bend. And I'm sorry for the blur on the camera. I should have switched angles here. Make sure the sides are shaped correctly and everything looks how you want it. And then cure the resin with your UV light. And you can see how this formula stays flexible. So the front will have flex while the fish bites and won't impede a hook set. But let's go ahead and trim it to the final shape now. Cut the back a little more even and tapered back to the tail. And then cut a little more gap into the belly section here so the hook sticks out. Also round out that belly a little bit better. Now you can see all the fibers stuck to the hook. And it's stuck inside the fibers as well. So we're going to want to rinse this under some warm water to help it release that fiber. But don't use hot water guys, just warm tap water. Once dry, add one more coat of the flex formula around the eyes and slightly into the back to ensure they stay on, but not into the belly. Cure that with your light and the fly is now finished. Now many of you ask how I get the split tail on this fly. And if you want that, take one feather and use a bodkin or the tips of your scissors and rub the bottom of the feather while pulling up on the tip. And this will kick it off towards the bottom like so. And then do the same thing with the other feather just on the top of it. And this will make the tail stay split and it should hold. However, every once in a while you might have to re-bend the feather, especially after repeated soakings and dryings. Now for this fly, I'm adding a dot to look like a shad. But if you want to tie this in other colorations to mimic other fish, you could add bars or nothing at all. It's up to you. Well, there we have it. I'm calling this the split tail shad. I don't believe I've seen this exact fly out there before, 
It is a creation I came up with for a customer to fish peacock bass and mimic the shad that they regularly feed on at his local lake. This fly worked really well for him, and he gave me permission to post some of these pics of the bass that he caught with this fly. Really nice job, man. Beautiful fish. But since then, I've sold this fly to many other customers who have caught quite a few largemouth and smallmouth bass, and also many other predatory type fish with them. They work really well. And like I said, I cannot find anyone tying these specifically. But if you have seen them before, please let me know in the comment section so I can correct this and at least give them credit in the description section of my video. Also, tell me what you think and what color patterns you think you'd tie these in. So as you probably saw, I used a few products by Risen. They make excellent fly rods and reels, as well as really nice hooks and other materials at excellent prices. And I was able to work out a deal with them as well to get you guys all 15% off at checkout just for being my subscriber. So type in McFly at checkout when you order anything from www.risenfly.com. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.